Pastor John here, inviting you to join my wife Denise and myself as we plunge into the depths of God's Word, growing ever closer to Him. I pray that He gives us all eyes to see, ears to hear, and a heart to understand. Now join us in our service already in progress. God bless you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Welcome back to the channel. God bless you. Open with me in your Bibles, if you would, to Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7. We're going to be reading verses 24 through 27. Matthew seven twenty-four. Therefore, Whosoever heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. And every one that heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them not, shall be likened unto a foolish man, which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. Father God, I come before you in the name of Jesus, Lord. Holy Spirit, I humble myself in your sight. I cannot do this without you, Lord. I am completely, totally, and utterly dependent upon you. I ask you to breathe life upon this word. Anoint these lips of clay that I might speak your words and your words alone. Let your fire and your anointing be upon me, Lord. And open our eyes and our ears and our heart that we might have eyes to see, ears to hear, and a heart to understand. And we give you all of the glory, all of the honor, and all of the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. The title of my message today is In the Midst of the Storm. All of us here in central, west central Florida just went through a few weeks ago a very powerful storm, Hurricane Milton. I want to give you some facts about storms that you should know. Number one, both of these houses went through the storm. The difference was that only one of them stood. And folks, i got to tell you, one of the biggest lies that is told in order to sell Christianity is if you give your heart to Jesus, all of your problems will go away. All of your problems will be solved. No, that's not true. Sometimes when you give your heart to Jesus, that's the beginning of your problems. The thing is, is God gives us the tools... And they're all right here. To deal with the problems. He gives us the answers. This is the answer book. You know when school teachers, they have a special book. They have a textbook that they give to the student. And they have the book that has the answers in it. This is the answer key, folks. That's the difference. Not only does he give us the answer key, but he gives us his Holy Spirit to lead us and guide us. But both houses go through the storm. God is merciful. He lets His sun shine on the just and the unjust. And He lets the rain fall on the righteous and the unrighteous. But the thing about it is, is all of us are going to go through trials. Jesus said, I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. Two in one house shall be divided. Or uh, two against one. <laughs> Whatever. The mother against the daughter, the daughter-in-law against the mother, and so on and so forth. Many times when you accept Jesus, you lose friends. Family don't want you around anymore. But guess what? You've got a brand new family. 
you got a brand new set of friends. Hallelujah. Yeah. The first century church started going into tribulation. People that got saved, they became persecuted. Starting off with the Apostle Paul going after them. Then when Paul gets converted, they had to sneak him out of the city by letting him over a wall in a basket because they were out to kill him. All the way up until the 4th century when um, oh, Constantine said if we win this battle, there's a cross that you'll see. It says IHS. I remember my mentor, Dr. Price, and this is related to what I'm telling you. I'm not rambling. He had this cross was given to him. It said IHS in it. He asked one of the associate pastors if he knew what that stands for. And he said, in his service? And he goes, that was a good guess, but no. In hocus signe is what it said. That was Latin. For in this sign we conquer. In this sign we do conquer. The sign of the cross. Now, Constantine was meaning it militarily. But once they won that, he made Christianity the official religion of Rome. No longer was it the uh, emperor worship. But until that point, Christians were persecuted. They were burned alive as human torches to light up the stadiums. They were fed to lions. Sawn in two. So, get it out of your head that becoming a Christian means you're never going to have any problems anymore because that is not true. You're just going to have the strength to go through those problems. Number two, God is with you in the storm. Let's take a look at Mark 37. Jesus is going to go across the lake and he's in a little boat, a little ship with his disciples. Mark 4.37. Mark 4.37. It says, And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship so that it was now full. And he, he being Jesus, was in the hinder or the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. And they awake him, and they say unto him, Master, carest not thou that we perish? Or carest thou not that we perish? And he arose, and he rebuked the wind. And he said unto the seas, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are ye so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? So Jesus, even though they were terrified, he was in the same boat with them. He was going through the storm with them. How many of you think that that boat had a chance of sinking with Jesus on it. Not a chance. But he had to get up from his nap and settle everything down because the people were frightened. They were afraid. So he had to do something about it. The thing was, he was there in the middle of it with them. Who's heard the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? I had an old pastor, Willie Bolton, he used to say, Shadrach, Meshach, and a bad Negro. <laughs> Lord God. Um, but Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they get thrown into the fiery furnace. They heated it up seven times hotter than they normally would. And the man, that, the people that threw them in there, oh, uh, died for <laughs> throwing them into the fire was so hot. And he looked inside and he said, didn't we throw three people in there? But I see four. And the fourth one is like unto the Son of God. Jesus was in that fire with them. 
and they came out, their hair wasn't singed, their clothes weren't burnt, and they didn't even smell like smoke. So God is with you in the midst of the storm. Number three, when the storm is upon you, I know it seems horrible, but you know what? They say every silver, every cloud has a silver lining. Well, you know what, though? The thing about a storm is storms don't last forever. Storms will pass. They're over. Yes, Hurricane Milton was horrible. It was, it was frightening for many people. But guess what? It's not here anymore. Say with me, this too shall pass. This too shall pass. Psalms 35. For anger endureth but for a moment. In his favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy <laughs> cometh in the morning. Hallelujah. Joy cometh in the morning. Jesus talked about that a woman in travail. Her whole world might seem like it's coming to end. But after that child's born, she forgets all about it. For the joy that that child came into the world. <laughs> yeah. Folks, we've got an election coming in a few days here. And I'm going to tell you something, folks. The candidate that you want so badly to win might not win. He might. She might. The one you want might win. I forgot there was a woman in the race for a second. But the, the person you want might not win. Guess what, though? They're not going to be there forever. They get four years, and then there's another election. Glory to God. I've endured presidents that I didn't care for. And if you get a president that you don't care for, you need to be on your knees praying to God for that person. To open their eyes, to lead them, to guide them, and to restrain them if need be. The problem with me is if there's a president in office that I don't like, I've found myself praying harder for that person than I do if the person I want there is in office. So be of good cheer. Even if this election doesn't go the way you want it to, that person will not be there for life. You may think they're going to destroy the country. We will bounce back in the name of Jesus. Uh, Psalms 37.1 David says, Fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity, for they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. They won't be there forever. They are human just like us. Whether they pass or whether they just come out of office in their time. We'll survive it. We always have. This country's what, uh, what about 200 and 48 years old now, I think. Something like that. We'll make it. We'll be okay. Glory to God. This too shall pass. Number four. When you surrender, it will get better. When you surrender to God, things will get better. It might not solve all of your problems, but things will get better when you surrender. Let's look at Jonah 1.4. Now, Jonah's fleeing from the presence of God because God wants him to go preach to Nineveh and 
Jonah don't like the Ninevites. He's like, no, God, I'm not going to do it because you're a merciful God. And if they repent, you'll withhold your hand from them. Wow. How many of us are like that? I don't want to pray for that person because they might just <laughs> actually get saved. Really? So Jonah's fleeing from the presence of God, and he's on a, a ship. And it says, but the Lord, in uh, Jonah 1.4, but the Lord sent out a great wind into the sea, and there was a mighty tempest in the sea, so that the ship was like to be broken. Then the mariners were afraid, and cried out, every man unto his God, and cast forth the wares that were in the sea ship, into the sea to lighten them, to lighten it of them. But Jonah was gone down into the sides of the ship and lay and was fast asleep. You see a little parallel between Jonah and Jesus here? So the shipmaster came to him and said unto him, What meanest thou, O sleeper? Arise, call upon thy God. If so be that he will think upon us that we perish not. Here's one man sleeping in the side of the ship trying to get away from the will of God. And here's another man, Jesus, sleeping in the, side, in, the, in the hinder part of the ship, going to do the will of God. But the storm rose up against both of them. And then um, Jonah 1.15 Jonah has told them that he's the reason of the storm. So they took up Jonah and cast him forth into the sea, and the sea ceased from her raging. So when you surrender to God, that raging will stop. When the men in the boat with Jesus, they woke him up, he ceased the raging of the sea. I'm going to tell you something, folks. You ain't going to outrun God. Whether He's trying to get your attention, sometimes that's what it is. Sometimes God's just trying to shake you up enough to get your attention. You know, I love watching uh, badge cam and uh, what do you call it, dash cam videos. And it always amazes me, the people that run from the police, whether it's on foot or whether it's in a car. And then when they get captured, then they want to fight the police. I got a news flash for you, folks. You ain't going to win that fight. Because there are always more cops to pounce on you than there are you. I don't care if you have a 10th degree black belt. You, you don't know enough martial arts to fight all of the police because they can keep bringing them on to pile on top of you, folks. You're not going to outrun the cops in a car. Even if you're outrunning the cars, they've got that bird in the air and they're watching you. You can't outrun the cops, but you do it anyway. Why are you running from God? You cannot run from God. What can I do? And I'm going to come back to this, what I'm telling you here in a second. Remember that God is a God of love. God is love. John 1, let me just, I'm just going to quote the whole thing. 1, um, excuse me, 1 John 4, 7, and 8 says, Beloved, let us love one another. For love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God, and knoweth God. He that loveth not, knoweth not God, for God is love. Oh yeah. I wasn't supposed to read that one yet, I don't think. Uh, yeah, it was. Matthew 5.44, Jesus says, But I say unto you, so now this is how Jesus is, Love your enemies. 
Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. And pray for them that despitefully use you and persecute you. Why? Why? Why does he want us to do that? Verse 45. That ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. For he maketh the sun to shine on the evil and on the good. And he sendeth rain on the just and the unjust. You know, folks, sometimes God will move the storm around us. Sometimes God will move us around the storm. But most often, God will send us right through the middle of the storm. You know that Christians and non-Christians both went through Hurricane Milton. Some Christians didn't come out on the other side with their lives. You know, one of my favorite movies is Alvin York, uh, Sergeant York. And there's a, a scene in the movie where he's riding home and he tells his mother and the pastor is reading the letter he tells his mother that Gracie said she was afraid for him tell him don't and they both looked over at Gracie and she said well I'm afeard and his mother said well child there ain't no reason to be afeard the Lord be taking care of them that love him yes he does but guess what there were many Christians besides Alvin York in that war in that world war. And many of them did not come home. Many of them are buried in France today. Some of them came home missing arms and legs. Why? If God takes care of them. Well, I'm going to tell you something. The Word of God says, Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of His saints. You know, we're given 70 years on this earth, but sometimes we go ahead of time. I remember in 1991, I was working doing fumigation work, and there was a tornado. The weather got really bad. We came down off the roof, and we were huddled on the stoop of this house. And... We're standing there. We had, I think there was five of us. We're standing there, and one man was holding on to the doorknob, and everybody else was holding on to it. We were all holding on to each other, like in a chain, and the one person holding the doorknob. And I watched that tornado go to the house, what would, have been, would have been to our right, and there was a big palm tree, probably 50 foot tall, and it grabbed it, snap, and laid it down, just like just like somebody took, took something and just laid it down like that, very gently, and then it moved to this side, and it did the same thing to that palm tree, the sound of that, I can hear the sound of that tree breaking right now. And then it started moving towards the stoop of that house. And when it did, my brother-in-law said, Guys, just close your eyes. And I knew what that meant. It meant we're getting ready to die. And I had my eyes closed. And I was praying. I said, God, forgive me for this. Forgive me for that. And I'm listing all this stuff. And all at once, God just flooded me with peace. And it says, You're repentant. That's what matters. Like a, you don't have to name all that stuff. You're repentant. And I shook my hands loose from everybody else. And I put up my hands like this. And I, I was like, let's do this thing. And I started singing. And I sang. Till the storm passes over. Till the thunder sounds no more. Till the clouds be rolled forever. From the sky. Hold me close, let me stand in the hollow of your hand. Keep me safe till the storm passes by. That 
that storm went across the street and hit the house across the street and BAM like that stripped the roof down to bare plywood. Terracotta roof. Precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of His saint. It ain't because you left too early. It's how did you handle that death? You know, we have one guy that was trembling so hard, he was shaking everybody else he was trembling. Another man who was a Vietnam veteran was crying as we were praying. And one man even wet himself, peed his pants. And do you know they all made fun of me? But I let go of them and I sang to the Lord. It was a beautiful thing. Precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of His saints. We all went through that together. Saints and sinners alike. Number two. Know that God is with you. No matter how bad it may seem, remember, He's with you. Even when things don't make any sense, Jesus, when He gave the Great Commission, in Matthew 28, 19, He said, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things what I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the earth. Amen. If you die... God is right there with you. The Bible says that not one sparrow falls to the ground without the Father. Are you worth more than many sparrows? He said you're worth more than many sparrows. And God doesn't let one of them fall to the ground that He's not there with them. Number three. Hang in there, baby! That was a message I did a few months ago. If you haven't seen it, go to the channel and find it. It's a very good message. Because it's not my message, it's His message. Hang in there. This too shall pass. Psalm, uh, excuse me, 1 Peter 1.7 says that the trial of your faith being more, much more precious precious than that of gold that perisheth. Though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Hang in there. You're being refined. That fire, that trouble, that storm that seems like it's about to tear you apart. Just hang in there a little longer. And remember, weeping may last for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Glory to God. Just get through it. Don't faint. Don't be weary in well-doing, for ye shall be rewarded if you faint not. Glory to God. And lastly, surrender. <laughs> you will never outrun God. I alluded to this earlier. Surrender. You know, at the end of the day, the Bible says that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God to the Father of God the Father. You're gonna do it whether you like it or not. Like it. Please like it. Don't be like the guy that runs from the police and then gets the holy smithereens beaten out of him. The guy that fights the police and comes out with uh, knots all over his face and cuts and bruises and has his eyes swollen shut because he tried to fight them. Surrender. You can't outrun God. Psalm 139.7 says, Whither shall I go from thy spirit? Or whither shall I go from thy present? If I ascend to the heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost part of the sea, even there shall thy hand lead me and thy right hand 
shall hold me. The house is surrounded. Come at him with your hands up. Surrender. Or are you going to die in a hail of bullets? <laughs> Surrender. Come out with your hands up. Come down on your knees. That's what the cops tell the people. Get down on your knees. Lay down on your face. Put your arms out like an airplane. Surrender. When you surrender, that raging will cease. Folks, there is a heaven to gain. And there is a hell to shun. Would you please make your home in heaven? Stop running from God. Because wherever you're going to outrun Him, He's already there. There's no place you can go to get away from Him. And He will never give up on you. As long as you have breath in your body, you have an opportunity. But once you're gone, folks, that's it. There's no more chance. Will you surrender today? Can you play something softly for me, please? I'm going to ask every head bowed, every eye closed. I'm going to ask you to say this prayer with me. That's okay. Just, just leave it. Say this prayer with me, and, and don't just say it. I want you to mean it in your heart. It's okay. It's okay. Just let it go. Father in heaven, I am a sinner, Lord. Be merciful to me. I surrender. I give up. I'm done running from you. Lord, I know that my sin has separated me from you. And I know, Lord Jesus, that you died to take that sin away from me. You died a death that I had deserved. And I surrender to you now. And I give my life to you. I repent of my sins. That means I turn my back on them. And I ask you to forgive me for my sins, Lord Jesus. Come into my heart and make me a new creation. I ask you, Lord Jesus, to save me and to be my Lord, to be my Savior, and to be my soon coming King. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Folks, if you said that prayer today and you really meant it in your heart, well, God bless you and welcome into the family of God. You are now my baby brother or my baby sister. Hallelujah. Welcome. And they are having a party in the heavens right now. The Bible says that the angels of God rejoice over one sinner that comes to repentance. That's you. And they are shouting and screaming right now for you. Glory to God. If you said that prayer this morning, I want you to look here on the front of the screen, right in front of the pulpit, there's our telephone number and, and our email address. Send us a text, give us a call, send us an email. Or if you want, write us a, a letter. I'll put that on the screen here in just a second. So, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, I would ask that you do that now. Give us a like. Share the video with your friends. Share it with your enemies. Until next time, God bless you. We love you. And we'll see you real soon. Hallelujah.